in vector calculus, and more generally differential geometry. Stokes' theorem is a statement about the integration of differential forms on manifolds, which both simplifies and generalizes several theorems from vector calculus. Stokes' theorem says that the integral of a differential form omega over the boundary of some orientable manifold omega is equal to the integral of its exterior derivative d omega over the whole of omega, i.e., this modern form of Stokes' theorem is a vast generalization of a classical result. Lord Kelvin communicated it to George Stokes in a letter dated July 2, 1850. Stokes set the theorem as a question on the 1854 Smith's Prize exam, which led to the result bearing his name, even though it was actually first published by Hermann Hankel in 1861. This classical Kelvin-Stokes theorem relates the surface integral of the curl of a vector field f over a surface sigma in Euclidean 3 space to the line integral of the vector field over its boundary sigma. This classical statement, along with the classical divergence theorem, fundamental theorem of calculus, and Green's theorem are simply special cases of the general formulation stated above. Introduction the fundamental theorem of calculus states that the integral of a function f over the interval a, b, can be calculated by finding an antiderivative f of f. Stokes' theorem is a vast generalization of this theorem in the following sense. By the choice of f. In the parlance of differential forms, this is saying that f dx is the exterior derivative of the zero form, i.e., function. In other words, that df equals f dx. The general Stokes theorem applies to higher differential forms omega instead of just zero forms such as f. A closed interval a, b, is a simple example of a one-dimensional manifold with boundary. Its boundary is the set consisting of the two points A and B. Integrating f over the interval may be generalized to integrating forms on a higher dimensional manifold. Two technical conditions are needed. The manifold has to be orientable, and the form has to be compactly supported in order to give a well-defined integral. The two points A and B form the boundary of the open interval. More generally, Stokes' theorem applies to oriented manifolds M with boundary. The boundary M of M is itself a manifold and inherits a natural orientation from that of the manifold. For example, the natural orientation of the interval gives an orientation of the two boundary points. Intuitively, A inherits the opposite orientation as B, as they are at opposite ends of the interval. So, integrating f over two boundary points A, B is taking the difference f minus f. In even simpler terms, one can consider that points can be thought of as the boundaries of curves that is as zero-dimensional boundaries of one-dimensional manifolds. So, just as one can find the value of an integral over a one-dimensional manifold by considering the antiderivative at the zero-dimensional boundaries, one can generalize the fundamental theorem of calculus, with a few additional caveats. To deal with the value of integrals over n-dimensional manifolds by considering the antiderivative at the dimensional boundaries of the manifold. So the fundamental theorem reads, General formulation. Let omega be an oriented smooth manifold of dimension n and let alpha be an n-differential form that is compactly supported on omega. First suppose that alpha is compactly supported in the domain of a single, oriented coordinate chart, u, phi. In this case, we define the integral of alpha over omega as i.e., via the pullback of alpha to Rn. More generally, the integral of alpha over omega is defined as follows. Let psi i be a partition of unity associated with a locally finite cover, ui, phi i, of coordinate charts. Then define the integral where each term in the sum is evaluated by pulling back to Rn as described above. This quantity is well defined, that is, it does not depend on the choice of the coordinate charts, nor the partition of unity. Stokes' theorem reads, if omega is in form with compact support on omega and omega denotes the boundary of omega with its induced orientation, then here d is the exterior derivative, which is defined using the manifold structure only. 
On the R, H, S, A circle is sometimes used within the integral sign to stress the fact that the manifold omega is closed. The R, H, S of the equation is often used to formulate integral laws. The L, H, S then leads to equivalent differential formulations. The theorem is often used in situations where omega is an embedded oriented sub-manifold of some bigger manifold on which the form omega is defined. A proof becomes particularly simple if the sub-manifold omega is a so-called normal manifold, as in the figure on the R, H, S which can be segmented into vertical stripes, such that after a partial integration concerning this variable, non-trivial contributions come only from the upper and lower boundary surfaces, where the complementary mutual orientations are visible through the arrows, topological preliminaries, integration over chains. Let M be a smooth manifold. A smooth singular K simplex of M is a smooth map from the standard simplex in RK to M. The free abelian group SK generated by singular K simplices is said to consist of singular K chains of M. These groups, together with the boundary map, define a chain complex. The corresponding homology is called the smooth singular homology of M. On the other hand, the differential forms with exterior derivative D as the connecting map form a cochain complex, which defines the RHAM cohomology. Differential K forms can be integrated over a K simplex in a natural way by pulling back to RK. Extending by linearity allows one to integrate over chains. This gives a linear map from the space of K forms to the KTH group in the singular cochain SK asterisk, the linear functionals on SK. In other words, a K form omega defines a functional on the K chains. Stokes' theorem says that this is a chain map from the RHAM cohomology to singular cohomology. The exterior derivative, D, behaves like the Julevon forms. This gives a homomorphism from the RHAM cohomology to singular cohomology. On the level of forms, this means closed forms, i.e., d omega equals zero, have zero integral over boundaries, i.e., over manifolds that can be written as and exact forms, i.e., omega equals d sigma, have zero integral over cycles, i.e., if the boundaries sum up to the empty set. Durham's theorem shows that this homomorphism is in fact an isomorphism, so the converse to 1 and 2 above hold true. In other words, if CI are cycles generating the KTH homology group, then for any corresponding real numbers I, there exists a closed form, omega, such that an this form is unique up to exact forms. Underlying principle. To simplify these topological arguments, it is worthwhile to examine the underlying principle by considering an example for the D equals two dimensions. The essential idea can be understood by the diagram on the left, which shows that, in an oriented tiling of a manifold, the interior paths are traversed in opposite directions, the contributions to the path integral thus cancel each other pairwise. As a consequence, only the contribution from the boundary remains. It thus suffices to prove Stokes' theorem for sufficiently fine tilings, which usually is not difficult. Special cases. The general form of the Stokes theorem using differential forms is more powerful and easier to use than the special cases. The traditional versions can be formulated using Cartesian coordinates without the machinery of differential geometry, and thus are more accessible. Further, they are older and the names are more familiar as a result. The traditional forms are often considered more convenient by practicing scientists and engineers but the non-naturalness of the traditional formulation becomes apparent when using other coordinate systems, even familiar ones like spherical or cylindrical coordinates. There is potential for confusion in the way names are applied, and the use of dual formulations. Kelvin Stokes theorem This is a 1 plus 1 dimensional case for a 1 form. 
This special case is often just referred to as the Stokes theorem in many introductory university vector calculus courses and as used in physics and engineering. It is also sometimes known as the Kerr theorem, the classical Kelvin-Stokes theorem, which relates the surface integral of the curl of a vector field over a surface sigma in Euclidean 3 space to the line integral of the vector field, over its boundary, is a special case of the general Stokes theorem once we identify a vector field with a one-form using the metric on Euclidean 3 space. The curve of the line integral sigma must have positive orientation, meaning that doctor points counterclockwise when the surface normal d sigma points toward the viewer, following the right-hand rule. One consequence of the Kelvin-Stokes theorem is that the field lines of a vector field with zero curl cannot be closed contours. The formula can be rewritten as where P, Q and R are the components of F. These variants are rarely used. In electromagnetism two of the four Maxwell equations involve curls of 3D vector fields and their differential and integral forms are related by the Kelvin-Stokes theorem. Caution must be taken to avoid cases with moving boundaries. The partial time derivatives are intended to exclude such cases. If moving boundaries are included, Interchange of integration and differentiation introduces terms related to boundary motion not included in the results below. The above listed subset of Maxwell's equations are valid for electromagnetic fields expressed in SI units. In other systems of units, such as a CGS or Gaussian units, the scaling factors for the terms differ. For example, in Gaussian units, Faraday's law of induction and Ampere's law take the forms respectively, where C is the speed of light in vacuum. Divergence theorem likewise. The Ostrogradsky Gauss theorem is a special case if we identify a vector field with the n-1 form obtained by contracting the vector field with the Euclidean volume form. An application of this is the case where is an arbitrary constant vector.